All right, Berkey, hypothetical. You, uh, you run an NHL team in a 31 team era. Someone at the GM meetings down in Boca Raton says, Berkey, I got an idea. 24 teams in the playoffs. You say what? Well, this year I say yes. I mean, this, okay, if you look at the alternatives, the ideal thing is you finish the regular season. Then you know the proper order of finish. You've got the order of selection in the draft, all those, um, you know, potential picks, compensatory picks, and, and conditional picks are sorted out. Okay, but we can't do that. We're not going to be able to finish the season. So what's the next best thing this year is to expand the playoffs? Now, I've been cynical and skeptical about our ability to play. I remain that way. I think this is too many teams. I think it's going to almost guarantee that we have an issue with this virus. But if they can pull us off, fantastic. This year only. My prediction is this is going to open the door for expanded playoffs going forward, which I'm vehemently opposed to. I, I want. I, I don't know where to go from there because I, I wouldn't mind walking down that road. But let let's start with this year and the idea that we're starting to hear that the top four teams in each conference would receive a buy. The rest meeting in a best of five, at least for now, five versus 12, six versus 11, seven versus 10, eight versus nine. Uh, and the top four get kind of a round robin so they can get their feet wet and they don't come back cold. Is, is that the best way to do it if you're going to go 24 for this year? Yes, I think yeah. so. I, I think they need an even number. The, 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 it's not fortunate for a couple teams that just missed, but I think this is a sensible demarcation line to get an even number. Um, I don't mind the concept of playing in. Uh, I think they've thought this through perfectly except for the backdrop we're up against. So you go to a hub city. And, and I heard today they're, they're saying the families may be involved. Well, that just adds a whole other layer of this. So my, here's my objections, and I love it. I, I hope this happens, and I hope I'm part of the broadcast team that gets to talk about it. Here's my issues. One, the testing that we're doing right now, there's not enough of it, and it's not accurate enough. Like the test the White House was using, the manufacturer itself said at a 15% failure rate, it was tested by an independent authority, said it's in excess of 40%. So the testing that we're using is not accurate enough. There's not enough of it. You're going to have to test these players every day. There's going to be a regular roster of players, plus black aces, plus trainers, plus coaches, plus management people. It's 50 per team without families, without spouses. That's 50 tests per team per day, 24 teams. I, I just, it, It's a big undertaking, and I, I, I hope they can pull it off. Brian Burke here on Tim and Sid. Berkey, in terms of, of some of the events around the globe and here in North America that have already gotten off the ground, and since the weekend in Germany and with the UFC, we haven't thankfully heard of more positive tests. The Bundesliga second week will get going tomorrow on Sportsnet with the Berlin Derby. Does that in any way, shape, or form make you feel more comfortable about putting sports back into play in this, in this context. Yes. To the extent that it's all good news. The UFC did have a fighter that tested positive and they had to remove him the first fight, not this last one. And they had to remove him and two guys on his crew Correct. Uh, and put them in isolation and quarantine. Uh, so it was not that they've had these events without issue. Uh, Formula One or whatever it was, when NASCAR went off this week, and that was beautiful. I'm not a NASCAR guy, but it was great. But carrying off a match between two soccer teams, playing outdoors, social distancing is easy, and it's not a full contact sport. There is some contact. You do it on a much smaller surface with more players. I think it's more complex and more difficult. But, yes, every event that goes off without a hitch – Helps the cause. And when the, when the governors of New York and California say we're open for business, yeah, we want pro sports back, that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, no doubt. But but this is this is all like, and listen, I, I completely get your point and your worry about whether or not this will cause more positive tests. But aren't like every second we're learning more about this. And that's got to like, I don't know if you're in on, on the conversations or you've heard about the conversations, but that has to be part of how the NHL tackles this and the NBA tackles it and the NFL tackles it. Like we're, we're all learning as we go. 
And Jacare Souza never should have gone to Jacksonville because he was in contact with someone who was positive. They should do the testing before the player even gets on a plane to go some. Like, we're going to learn by every league, by Korea's baseball league, by Korea's soccer league, by the Bundesliga. Like, if we do this in a couple months, don't you feel like we'll be a lot further down the road on how to do things like this? safely absolutely and i think the nhl is banking on that and i think the nba is banking on that we'll know more about the disease we'll know more about how to pull off sporting events maybe it doesn't have to be an empty building maybe it could be five thousand fans or six thousand fans you don't know socially distant we don't know so that's what the league is betting on and that's why not starting next season until later in the fall or even say january 1st gives them a lot of runway here and yes uh, again this thing is a deadly disease that's killing people all over the planet. We can't minimize the risk. Our players have young families. They've got parents that are in a, in a high-risk category. They can't just come and go. This has to be done right. And I have confidence in the league. I'm not sure I have confidence in the medical system to the extent that the testing materials are not up to the right level in my mind, and there's not enough of them. That's a, Both those problems I expect to be resolved in the next 45 days. Yeah, Brian Burke here on Tim and Sid. Um, and for the few of you who didn't see that the reporting, that goes for us too. That goes so, for that, that goes, goes for, for all society. of society. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, for those who didn't see the reporting last night, great reporting from Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnston. The proposal that seems to be getting the most steam in terms of a format: twelve teams, top twelve teams, based on winning percentage in each conference. Top four seeds will get a bye. The four seeds will play each other for seeding, just so they get some games in as well. So first round will be seeds five through twelve in each conference. Um, can you imagine Berkey not playing hockey for four months and having to deal with Sidney Crosby in the first round of a best of five? Like I'm looking at these matchups, the hockey fan in me can't help. And these, these are, these are intriguing. Like, I mean, are you, if you're a team right now in the NHL, who's most aggrieved by potentially what could play out here in a few months format wise in the first round? Well, first off, the, the players that come back from Europe are facing a two-week quarantine, and no one's told them to come back yet. Correct. So you'll, we'll really know this has some is gathering some speed when they when the Euros get back on planes. Mm-hmm. Sweden never locked down, and their fatality rate's very high. So the the NHL medical com- uh, community is going to have to figure out if they're a special risk category or not. But when they start to come back over, you get excited. Um, I, I think. This is a great format if you're going to play with 24 teams. I think that what they've done is it's not perfect. At best of five, someone will say, oh, you got to put an asterisk on the cup. No, you don't. Um, You lose the home crowd advantage. uh, And some of these teams that have truly intimidating buildings, they're not going to have that. But it is a good solution, and it does reward teams that were making a push and might have been able to get in. So on this, uh, I, I think it's fantastic on this basis this year only. I am not in favor of right now when Seattle comes in, 16 teams make the playoffs. That's half the league. To make the playoffs, you've only got to be one game better than a guy that couldn't even win half his games. That's enough to make the playoffs. That's that's too low a bar, or it's just right about enough. To me, if you add playoff teams, that's going to weaken the, the product and dilute the value of the regular season. That being said, I guarantee you they'll expand the playoffs going forward. I promise you. Yeah. We, you, I think we're all on the same page on this. I think we all know that this 24 teams is good for this year. I think we all agree that maybe too many teams will make the playoffs next year because they'll still be trying to recoup money that they lost from this year. Although, I think Sid and I are okay with playing games among the lower seeds in the NHL. I think we're... Sid, are, am I speaking out of, out of turn here by saying that both you and I are good with if you want to let 8, 9... 10 and 11 in and then force them to play or even make it seven, eight, nine, ten, and have them play off to get into the playoffs. I'm good with it. Tim adding more games. If it makes Rogers communications happy, then I'm happy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if he's in the same place, but uh, but honestly, like there are TV commitments that need to be made up here, right? Like this is a stretch. that's dinged people big and small here. Um, I I'm just, just saying from a these... fan's perspective, like oh, forget, the, both. forget yeah, the money both. and I know we I'm can't, for, yeah, like I don't care if, if you're seventh and you're bitching and moaning Berkey, it's the same thing as being one game over 500 finish higher and then you won't have to play in this play in series or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. I, listen, 
you do the math, 16 out of 32 teams. So what's the bar to be a playoff team in our league right now? You've just got to be in the 51st percentile. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and, and I took this position when I was in a playoff position with my teams. I took this position in years in which I missed the playoffs. I was like, don't add teams. We got to do better. So I've been consistent on it from day one. But I guarantee you there's going to be these play-in games going forward. That's the one unfortunate thing. I do support this format for this year. Brian Burke here on Tim and Sid. Berkey, from a, um, from a TV sense, it's going to be unique, but there's going to be opportunities here. And you now live in our world, so I'm, I'm interested what you think of, of, of what changes you'd like to make. Like what, what, what would you like to implement from a TV broadcast standpoint that really wasn't that realistic five months ago, but you think might fly now that you think the audience specifically would enjoy at home? Well, I think that player tracking stuff, the league had it almost in place before the pause. I was down at uh, the game day skate for a lease game and the, and the guys were coming in that were going to try out this tracking equipment. And they have, I think it's 85 tracking sensors in the building around the lower concourse. And then the player wears uh, something that emits a signal and they can track his speed and position on the ice. So they're already trying to improve the, the viewer's experience, and we're close to implementing that when the pause came. They can do a lot with that. You can see how you could isolate your favorite player and see how fast he's going, how hard that shot was, how long that, that sequence took. So they can add to the viewing experience and the listening experience. They can mic players more aggressively. They can mic officials more aggressively. They can mic the bench more aggressively. Now, there's going to have to be a delay because our guys don't always use family-friendly language, <laughs> but um, they can add to the, the audio part of the game that fans get to pick up, and maybe you don't do it live, but maybe you come out of a break and you replay Sidney Crosby skating over to Patrick Hornquist and saying, I'm going forward on this face-off. You jump, jump the guy. So I think we can add to the experience. We have to be creative. We have to be flexible. Uh, more interviews from the bench. I don't know if that's with social distancing, whether that's possible, but we can make the viewing experience better. They can experiment with maybe not right away, maybe not this year, but next year. What is, if you're socially distanced, can you have 5,000 in there? Yeah. And so, you know, can you have 6,000 fans in there? Can you pipe in crowd noise? There's nothing wrong with crowd noise. We've all watched sitcoms for years that had a laugh track. I don't mind trying crowd noise. I don't think I'll like it, but yeah. I don't mind trying that. But there's a lot we can do to make it better. I think the tracking stuff really intrigues people. I think miking up players and, and giving people a look at what is said on the bench and what is said on the ice that's appropriate to rebroadcast. Re um, I think there's things we can do to make it better for sure. The, the one that I'm excited about, and listen, Sid knows this. I was the, the face of the XFL in Canada when it first popped out, and it was a, a colossal failure, and I'll never get that year back. However, <laughs> Berkey, one of the things that they did use was a camera on a wire over top the field that everyone thought was ridiculous when it started, and now you see it at any every NFL game. I, I Given the way that I know that you know, like a lot of hockey people love watching from the press box view, if the NHL is able because they don't need the scoreboard anymore for no fans, if they could do that camera across the wire to follow the play from over top from a bird's eye view, I think that would be amazing for fans to be able to see. Yeah, I'd like to see things like that. Innovations with camera angles. They used a rail cam in the World Cup a few years ago where a camera could race along the top of the glass and keep up with the players. That was yeah, a cool speed. camera angle. Yeah. Not not something that you'd want to use the whole game, but three or four shots in there that where you show the speed of the game and keep track with the play, you know, keep pace with the players. Uh, so yeah, and there, it's time to innovate and try all that stuff. Yeah, right. Timmy, I'll take you a step further. Invert it, invert it for an entire feed. Put it on another channel, Sportsnet 360 or whatever, and make it look like EA Sports NHL 20. Yeah, if you, you want. want to relate to younger people, I mean, that's I mean, for a lot of people, that's what they know hockey as. I mean, it's a yeah. huge brand. You can, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. Berkey, we, we appreciate when you come on. Thank you, sir. I enjoyed it. Thanks, guys.